schmacks and we're back uh, making anchovy training treats today and I'm back to using the silicone mat because I needed really small treats it's turned out that me being a dog treat maker is contributing to the overall fatness of one of my two dogs Tori she's gained too much weight and the vet has told me she needs to lose weight Problem is, I'm still training Jake, and I give him treats all the time, and she wants treats too, so we've had to go smaller. So the dilemma was, what's gonna taste really, really good if it's really, really small? And I thought, fish. It's uh, rich in omega-3s. Uh, what better ingredient than anchovies? And you might think, well, why can't I just give my dog an anchovy? Well, when I'm training Jake and I'm, I've got Tori with me, I know you don't really like them raw, do you? Oh, although these are dry, they're not raw. Plain, you don't like them plain. You like them mixed with other things. You don't want to stuff these in your pocket. It would be gross. So we're going to grind them up really small and we're going to add something luscious like sweet potato, good fiber parsley which tastes wonderful, parmesan cheese which, which holds everything together, and then gluten-free flours. So I'm going to make a little bit of noise for a second, but let's do this. In go. One cup of dried anchovies. You might be wondering about salt. I thought no salt. Dogs, no salt. Zero. Wrong. Dogs need a little tiny bit of salt. You just don't want to go overboard. It does um, keep their electrolytes under control, just like in a human. So this is a half a cup of cooked sweet potato. And the way I cook sweet potato is I peel it, slice it, put it in water, and microwave it for seven minutes with a piece of wax paper on top, let it cool, and then put it in the food processor, and then measure it out. So that's that. You just desperately want this, don't you? Okay, we're gonna put in our eighth of a cup of Parmesan cheese. More flavor. <laughs> Somebody's having a conniption fit. That's you, that's you. Then we're gonna put in some parsley. Just use your judgment. I just took a couple of uh, pieces of parsley and threw it in there. Okay, what's next? Oat flour, low on the glycemic index. Throw that in. We are throwing in, not throwing in, we are carefully pouring in our rice flour, and that's also a half a cup. And then this is the magic binder, tapioca flour. And you're gonna need a binder uh, to make sure that when uh, your little treats come out of the oven, they stick together. So we're gonna give this a whirl. I'm one of those people who always use the chef's knife and people would say, why don't you have a food processor? And I said, because I love to chop things up. Oh, I don't know what I was thinking. This is insanely easier. All right, so I'm gonna stop for one second. I'm gonna stop shouting. And now I'm gonna add three quarters of a cup of water. There we go. And the last time I did this, it seemed like magic to me and I don't know if you're supposed to do this. But I hit the button and it kind of turned into a dough magically in the food processor. So let's see what happens. And you want it to be a little bit runny because it's got to go in all the nooks and crannies here. So I'll add more water if I need to. But that's looking pretty darn good. All right, let's stop that. And we're going to remove this. Take this off, I've learned how to do this. You just come straight up. I'm done with that. And let's move this big bad boy over here. Now we have our dough, and it's not your usual dough. You want it to be all mushy. And you're gonna pull it out 
with something that's flat. I've been using this kind of mini spatula. And then you're just gonna spread rid of this. Oops, I already made a mistake. It's not really a mistake though, is it? No. <laughs> and then you're gonna smush. Smush it all over. And it looks like I could have put this through a little longer. The parsley, the anchovies look good, but the parsley itself it looks like it could have been ground up a little bit better. And what we're gonna do is once we get all these little modules of crevices, um, once we get all these little treats filled, is we're gonna take a larger spatula and then clean off the top. And I discovered when I was working on some test batches that you don't actually have to clean off the top if you don't care what it looks like because the top will cook to a crisp and then when you dump it, it almost looks like uh, bark, like chocolate bark or yogurt bark. Um, they're a little bit bigger than what you're gonna get uh, by cleaning it up, which I'm about to do. And this is good, the dough consistency is good. Like I said, I did not um, put that through the processor long enough because you can see the parsley kind of said, nope, I'm not getting ground up today. Everything else is fine. Looks like I'm a little kid in kindergarten doing a finger painting. One of the things about this particular tray, it's big. So you can see it's kind of flimsy. It's not flimsy. No, it's not flimsy. That's the right, not the right word. It's flexible. It moves. You can't go like this and put it in the oven. I'm going to end up putting it on a tray to put it in the oven. But you do have options. Um, that's why these are here. I've got a smaller one in the shape of fish and one in little dog bones. And these are easier to carry to the oven. And your oven's going to be set at 350. And the nice thing is you don't really have to doubt your oven temp on these. Uh, in a half hour, they're done, perfect. So, and it looks like I did a good job of figuring out how much dough I need. My previous batch, I, well, I don't know. Maybe I had too many, and I'm gonna show you what I did with the extra dough. Let's see, we're almost there. I hope this doesn't look like a struggle, because you could be watching TV or talking to your kids or playing with your dog at the same time. All right, do we have everything filled in here? Okay. You can actually hear it when it goes into the little holes. All right, I found that water is your friend in removing this top part. So I don't know why I got such a small bowl here. <laughs> It's not going to work. Let's go back to this. And we need to clean this. Yeah, we can do it from the side. All right, so I, I did bring a special bowl here to save the extra, because there is something you can do with the extra. Here we go. And hopefully you can see that it's cleaning up. I do have to say, it kind of looks like a lot of work, what I'm doing, but these have been the best thing ever. When I make treats, generally, they're gone in maybe two or three days. I still have tons and tons of these. In fact, I believe there's 467 little uh, spots on here for treats. And the dogs are happy with one little one instead of you know giving them a big old biscuit that you get in a box or whatever. I think I'm getting used to the smell of anchovies. When I walked in the kitchen to begin the filming, I was like, oh my god, it sounds like I'm in a fishmonger's shop. Okay. 
And that was just the last little bit of water there, you can see. Makes it real pretty, comparatively. There we go. All right, before, I'm gonna just put this on a tray and stick it in the oven in a second. I, that's pretty quick, actually, you have to admit. Um, this is what I did with the leftover dough here the last time I made this. I took a mini cupcake tin and I put the little liners in there. And then I took little dabs of the anchovy dough and stuck my thumb in the middle. And then I used some of the extra sweet potato that I had when I made the sweet potato, stuck it in the middle. And I know I have a little man over here who definitely wants one of these. He's been asking me for two days. So we'll take care of that in a little bit. Meanwhile, let's get this on the tray. Smooth that out a little bit. And that looks pretty good. I mean, it could or it will. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go put this in the oven, 350 degrees for 30 minutes, and then we'll be back. Gluten free anchovy training treats. I should call them maybe training bits because they're so small. Uh, let's see how we've done. Uh, it is pretty cool at this point. Uh, but Jakey, I still don't really want you to have your nose touching it. No, I know, look at you. Let's see if they're going to, yes! Yay, that's what I was hoping for. Okay, they didn't all come out, but look, that's pretty darn good. Whoop! <laughs> look at Jakey. Oh, this is fun. This is fun, Jakey Jake. Oh, they're going everywhere. Okay, let's do that. Let's put this aside for a second. It's like popcorn. Um, and see. Oh no, Miss Tori. She's got a limp. I told you guys. She's on bed rest. She's here. She heard the treats coming. You weren't supposed to be in the picture. But we're going to say okay, Missy Miss. All right, you guys. Come over here. Come on, everybody sit. Good boy. Ooh, listen to that crunch. Tori, sit. Good girl, mama. That is very satisfying to hear for a cook. The crunch of fabulous dog treats. And then I did promise Jake that he could have one of those little sweet potato pie thingies. So let me grab one of these and see what he thinks. And I guess Miss Tori could have one too. Let's see. I don't know if they're gonna be messy or delicious and they're gonna go down in one bite. Or, let's see, have a seat. Okay, Jake. First. Oh my gosh, his eyes, I, I swear they were crossed. <laughs> and Tori. Oh, she's gonna take hers out of here. She's like, that's mine. <laughs> okay, success. Anchovy training treats, you can put these in your pocket and it's not gonna stink up your jacket.